Everyone got quiet. <laughs> That's rare. <laughs> Do you want to join me, Ignacio, for? <coughs> it works, I guess. Uh, we didn't script this part. You'll notice for many things for this event, we have not scripted them. We're, we're not professional event managers, but we're incredibly excited to welcome all of you uh, to work together, to meet, to eat, to talk, to chat, um, as we figure out some real interoperability in our industry. Um, Ignacio and I are your co-chairs, um, so he's leading the ARD track. All that agenda work that you've been seeing, putting it all together has been all him selecting all the right places. I've been focused on the spatial temporal asset catalogs, um, and we're gonna sprint in our own room for days two and three. But today we wanted to get everyone together um, to kind of set the stage, um, talk through the big things, and see some presentations that felt more relevant to, to more people. So um, that's the, the general. Do you want to talk through the agenda a little bit more, or uh, just jump <coughs> in? Not really. I think we're going to have plenty of time to talk. So people are going to get tired of hearing us. So I just want to say thank you, all of you guys, to, from coming. This is exceeding our expectations by so much. I mean, it's very exciting. We're expecting literally 10, 20 people. <laughs> So there's, I hope we don't disappoint each other. <laughs> we figure some things out together, but I think this is pointing to that there is something that is not figured out. That's obviously why we're all here today. So very excited. Um, and we wanted to welcome Susan to the stage. Uh, so some of you early on uh, saw that we were going to try to do this at Planet, um, and then we kind of saw how big it was getting, and we had this last minute scramble. Um, to figure out a venue, and USGS came through in a gargantuan way, uh, saved us all, and let us welcome you all. So we wanted to uh, have her say a few things and get you up to speed on the facility. Yep. Yeah, turn it on. Nope. I think so. It'll come on in just a second. Well, I'm Susan Benjamin with USGS. We're delighted to uh, have you all join us for this exciting workshop. Um, this is... Uh, the third largest spot with USGS employees in the nation after uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, Denver. So you, the folks you'll see wandering around um, are engaged in various different kinds of science, um, earthquake studies and volcanoes and landslides and, and water quality and water availability. And my group that deals with uh, geographical science um, my, my background actually is in satellite data uh, analysis and all the things that you guys are making analysis ready are the things that I struggled with throughout my entire <laughs> career. Uh, we worked hard on it. So um, this is really exciting. I think it's going to push science further and further now that we don't have to worry about registering and atmospheric correction and on an individual basis. So a few quick details. Um, you all came in through through uh, the stairways and the and the elevator. If for some horrible reason the fire uh, alarms go off, <laughs> please go out of the building and get as far away as you can. It will not be possible to be in this room when the fire alarms go off. Um, the restrooms are right around the corner, um, and there are more restrooms downstairs and way farther down the hallway. Um, and uh, Dario Garcia, our, uh, our IT guru extraordinaire, has arranged for the, um, the uh, wireless uh, connections, and he'll also be video streaming this. So thank you for coming, and I hope it's going to be a great workshop. Um. So to kick things off, we wanted to uh, welcome Hamed from Radiant Earth. Uh, so Radiant Earth is really the convener of this, that sort of neutral spot where we can all play as companies and not have it dominated by any one. Um, and he's going to tell you all a bit more about what Radiant Earth is about. Um, I wear Radiant Earth hat sometimes, and a planet hat sometimes, so you'll see part of that. Um, so he's going to do that, and then we'll have a few words from um, some of our sponsors, and then Ignacio and I will do some uh, longer welcomings. Thanks, Amit. Okay, this is working. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, a big shout out to Chris and Ignacio for making this event happen. Uh, they did a lot of a lot of planning and uh, logistics, so I appreciate all of the work they have done. And also a thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, uh, I'm here on behalf of our team and welcoming you all here. Uh, we are so happy to uh, convening this event and joining with all of the other conveners and sponsors and all of you participants to uh, kick off this, this first of series for these events. And we are hoping that we can do more of these uh, in future. So uh, I should introduce myself as well. So I'm the lead geospatial data scientist at uh, Radiant Earth. Uh, we are a relatively small team, but we are split between East Coast and here. Uh, part of our team is in Washington, D.C., and the tech side is basically here in, in Bay Area. Uh, I want to give a brief overview of uh, what Radiant is uh, about and why we do these type of events and what is really the mission behind Radiant Earth. So our goal is really open geospatial data for positive global impact. Radiant Earth is a, is a non-profit organization. We are a registered 501c3. Uh, we are funded by Gates Foundation and OMIDR Network and some other philanthropic organizations as smaller grants. And really, the goal is really connect the people worldwide to Earth imagery, data analytics, and uh, basically geospatial tools to address the, the societal needs and the, challenging in the challenges in the, in the global development community. Uh, we do this uh, with uh, kind of a technology platform and also some uh, community events and thought leadership events. Uh, our focus is to be the really a back-end infrastructure for solving these, trouble, these problems, uh, from global health, from agriculture, poverty, uh, land rights, uh, water, climate change. We have basically built a technology platform to enable those people in those communities to address these challenges. And we try to work on different projects and use cases that can help them uh, and show the use of these data to them. Uh, our platform uh, is an open source technology platform. Uh, it's open, as I said. It's, it's consuming both commercial data and government data, so any kind of open source and uh, uh, non-open source data can be consumed on the platform. It's a collaborative environment. Uh, you can have teams and organizations work with others on projects, share with people inside your uh, organization or outside of that. It has a federated catalog, and it's an agile uh, working environment in terms of working with the data, visualizing them, and also sharing them with the outer world. Uh, this is just a snapshot of the platform and the things that you do. And the doing this and building this technology, we have kept in mind that we have two user bases outside here, outside our uh, basically uh, team. And that is users with very kind of good background and experience in coding and programming. So those have a good API access. And those users who that do not necessarily have the knowledge working with programmers, but they know the problem. So they can have a very nice user interface to work with the, with the data and tools that can be applied to those data all on the cloud. Uh, we have a series of APIs uh, now available to our uh, basically user base, and all of them, again, open source and free. We have raster APIs and using the imagery, different kinds of imagery, satellite, drone, and aerial imagery, working with areas of interest, uh, different kinds of annotations, and the basically teams and organizations, as I mentioned. And we also have non-raster data APIs on weather, air quality, kind of population, a new crop suitability index that uh, we, I'm not talking about uh, that much technical here, but we can talk about this in the in the breaks if you want. Uh, keeping in mind the, the big data problem in the Earth observation, we recently initiated a, a new a new initiative called ML Hub Earth. Uh, basically, ML Hub Earth is is an open source machine learning commons for Earth observation, and the goal is really to bring again everybody together in the community to promote creation of these open source training image libraries, as well as uh, ML tools and algorithms to be applied to the basically Earth observation data. Uh, it is a, 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 another kind of collaborative environment we have initiated. We will put out our own kind of training label data set. I will mention one of them in the next slide. And tools, but we also invite others to join us uh, in doing so. And we want to, again, have a set of best practices and comments to how we should do this as a community. So it's interoperable, so everybody can consume that. We want to keep this in mind in these features about the training library. That should be machine learning ready as we have more applications of machine learning to the Earth observation data. It should be adaptable, discoverable, and understandable to different algorithms and different people. Interoperable in terms of different uh, algorithms and different environments we can work in. And inclusive and diver diverse. When you think about training data, there's always a challenge about bias in the diversity of the data, whether it's geodiversity, whether it's the a type of data or the resolution of the imagery used on those. 
Uh, keeping that in mind, our first kind of open source labeled data set would be a global land cover classification uh, labeled data set, which is using open source data, so it's Sentinel-2 10 meter resolution. Uh, it is going to be global and diverse, so to keeping in mind that geodiversity concept of it, uh, and it would be ML-centric and ML-ready data set. Uh, again, to kick off such a, such a project and uh, not to reinvent the wheel, we convened the, the first workshop on ML, basically machine learning for global development. So Radiant Earth now has a technical committee on machine learning for global development. We hosted this workshop back in June, about, about two months ago. And we basically got together and answered some of the questions, tried to answer some of the questions around use of machine learning for, glo uh, for global development, keeping in mind the features that I said, interoperability, open source, and machine learning ready. Uh, you can read more about what was the basic details of that workshop on our uh, Medium Insights, which is uh, Radiant Earth Insights. We have a blog on Medium. And this is all the philosophy that we have about a data collaborative innovation. There's also another blog post from our CTO and that Medium Insight about why we invest in this kind of data collaborative in initiative and how we think this will be benefiting the whole community, not just the global development. And we want to have basically an enhanced industry collaboration as well. This is not just a nonprofit world doing this. Um, we want to do this to ignite the innovation and make people and enable them to consume more data and basically have a positive impact in the uh, developing world. We also have a technical fellowship program, and we try to work with uh, good fellows uh, who help us uh, support the open source development. Our two first fellows are uh, Chris Holmes and uh, Seth uh, Fitzsimmons, both of them here. Uh, and they have been working on part of the technology that you will see here the, the next two days as well. I mean, Stack was one of the first things. Uh, out of the Stack, it came Stack Browser. Uh, COG was also part of the initiative. I mean, uh, I should say stack. What is a stack to some people? Probably this is the first time. It's the spatial temporal asset catalog. Basically, how we can better catalog the, the Earth observation data and any kind of geospatial data. And COG comes naturally as part of that. The cloud optimized geotiff. Uh, so they have been working on this open source technology. Uh, uh, the COG itself, the COG validator, is now up on our on our uh, basically website. You can you can uh, use that and see if you're. Uh, data that you're consuming is is a COG format. As I mentioned, the stack browser is up. Uh, as the name resembles, it's really a browser for the stack uh, compliant data, and you can easily uh, navigate and go through the catalog and uh, see different data. And it's not just a thumbnail of the image. It's really the actual image you can you can consume on the browser with all of the metadata. And the COG map is also part of that. So uh, uh, to learn more about this, I think. Chris will give a talk on the stack as well, and you will hear more probably the next days. And those of you who are in the stack track are definitely more familiar with the concept. Uh, with that, I just want to wrap up here. And again, a thank to everyone for joining us here uh, to get in touch with us, our email and social media, the Twitter, and also our GitHub repositories, both the Radiant Earth and ML Hub, uh, basically has many of these technologies. The stack, uh, the, uh, the stack browser, all of them sit on the Radiant Earth GitHub. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, I would like to invite Chris Helm to give a welcome. This was a comic like that. I thought it was different. <laughs> um, this is working. There. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm from Maxar, uh, <laughs> which is a funny name uh, because I'm not really from Maxar. I'm from Digital Globe. And Maxar comprises of a few different companies. Uh, it's about a year old. It, it forms four companies. One's MDA. SSL, who builds satellites, um, and then Digital Globe and uh, Radiant Solutions, not to be confused with Radiant Earth, of course. Um, so I, th I believe Radiant Solutions, as well as Digital Globe, are both kind of the, the ones that are sponsoring some of this work, along with many other companies. Uh, I'm here representing Digital Globe, as well as my fellow colleague, Jeff Naus. Um, we're excited. We're, we're really happy about, about what's kind of this is you know coming together. Um, I'm going to talk later about some of the stuff we're doing around quote unquote ARD, um, just image processing, pixel processing. Um, I think that's about it. Um, looking forward to it. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, we wanted to, to give a chance to highlight our sponsors. So uh, Maxar and Planet um, are the sort of convening sponsors that have um, put in a, a big chunk with Radiant being that sort of convener of the whole event. Um, and then we wanted to give the other sponsors um, 
a little bit of uh, a chance to, to say hi. Um, <laughs> if you're a sponsor, do you want to stand up? Um, <laughs> Raise your hand. Um, so a bit about well, each of them. Uh, Cosmic Works uh, has been over there with Ryan and, and David. Uh, they were the, the first sponsor to step up. Um, and they've been doing uh, the SpaceNet competitions and starting to host a bunch of other data and have been early with Stack. Um, PCI Geomatics, um, right there, um, has been working with ARD a whole lot and, uh, <coughs> you know, both on the desktop and on their server offerings. Um, so it was super cool to see them here and, and helping out uh, Climate Corp with Mike and he's got a whole crew with him. Um, so say hi to them. Uh, they do agriculture stuff, likely lots of people know them, um, but super psyched they could, could jump in and join us. And Astrea, uh, the guys behind uh, raster frames um, and lots of other really awesome work. So um, a big round of applause for our uh, sponsors. And then we've also got our supporters with Cosine Measurements, um, give a wave. Marcos. Um, Azavia. Did you guys make it yet? Yes. Hey, Eugene. <laughs> I didn't see you yet. Chris. Um, and uh, Vulcan. Kirk, did you make it? Awesome. Right back there, uh, which is Paul Allen's charity. Uh, and they're doing a bunch of core weave mapping and, and recently found out and, and decided to come in and join us. So um, really excited for everyone to make this possible. Um, you know, we kind of got the core budget going, but this has made us uh, able to do some nice dinners in the evening for you to all get to know each other, our lunches. Uh, the lack of drinks was our fault, not the sponsor's fault. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks to everyone who sponsored. Um, so, uh, and thank you all. Uh, this is really made possible by each and every one of you being here. Um, everyone had to take some time, your company let you come, um, and this wouldn't be possible without each and every one of you. So give yourselves a round of applause for being here. 